I've waited for this moment. I am a sniper. Waiting is my job. Never moving a muscle. Concentrating. <coughs> I am long shot. You cannot save me. Please, just finish me quick. I am a Kurd. I have always dreamed of a peaceful place like this. A Kurd? So that's why you're called Wolf. I was born on a battlefield. Raised on a battlefield. Gunfire, sirens and screams. They were my lullabies. Hunted like dogs day after day. Driven from our ragged shelters. That was my life. Each morning I'd wake up and find a few more of my family or friends dead beside me. I'd stare at the morning sun and pray to make it through the day. The governments of the world turned a blind eye to our misery. But then, he appeared. My hero, Saladin. He took me away from all that. Saladin? You mean Big Boss? I became a sniper. Hidden. Watching everything through a rifle scope. Now I could see war not from the inside, but from the outside, as an observer. I watched the brutality the stupidity of mankind through the scope of my rifle. I joined this group of revolutionaries to take my revenge on the world. But I have shamed myself and my people. I am no longer the wolf I was born to be. In the name of vengeance, I sold my body and my soul. Now, I am nothing more than a dog. Wolves are noble animals. They're not like dogs. In Yupik, the word for wolf is Keglanek, and the Aleuts revere them as honorable cousins. They call mercenaries like us dogs of war. It's true, we're all for sale for some price or another. But you're different, untamed, solitary. You're no dog, you're a wolf. Who are you? Are you Saladin? Wolf, you spared Meryl's life. Even when I'm just an onlooker, I don't like to see women or children get hurt. Rest easy. You'll die as the proud wolf you are. I finally understand. I wasn't waiting to kill people. I was waiting for someone to kill me. A man like you. You're a hero. Please, set me free. Why? Why? I loved you. What is it? My gun. Give it to me. She is part of me. Yeah. 
Everyone is here now. Okay, hero. Set me free. Goodbye. Snake, you said that love could bloom on a battlefield. But I couldn't save her. What are you doing? Returning it to its owner. I don't need a handkerchief. Why? I don't have any more tears to shed. <laughs> have to protect yourself now. Don't trust anyone. Yeah. If I can't stop Metal Gear, this whole place will be bombed to hell. Yeah. We might not meet again. Don't lose the codec. I'll be behind you all the way. You can leave any time. Get a head start. A head start on your new life. Snake! What was she fighting for? What am I fighting for? What are you fighting for? If we make it through this, I'll tell you. Okay. I'll be searching too.
Colonel, listen to me. I found a parachute near the wreckage of the Hind. A parachute? You don't think that Liquid survived? No way. He'd be mad to try to escape by parachute. As soon as he jumped out of the pilot seat, he'd be cut to ribbons by the rotor blades. So what's that parachute doing there, then? I have no idea. A trap? Either that or a message. To me. Meaning, I'm not dead, I suppose? Maybe. But I think it's more like, I'll string you up. Well, in any case, don't let your guard down. I won't. As long as the strategy of nuclear deterrence continues, nuclear weapons may be reduced, but they will never be eliminated. If you think about it, nuclear reduction does not mean much without elimination as the ultimate goal. I used to work in the DIA. I figured the only way to achieve nuclear elimination was to work from the inside to convince them of the ineffectiveness of the deterrence theory. Seems like you're pretty focused on that issue. Victims of nuclear radiation are a sad thing to see, and I have seen a lot of it. I have seen more than enough of it. I was born and raised in Pripyat, Ukraine. I was 10 years old on that day, April 26, 1986. You don't mean... Yes, Chernobyl. That is the day that changed my life and thousands of other lives. I live just three kilometers north of there. 600,000 to 700,000 people were evacuated. Over 650,000 children suffered the effects of radiation poisoning. Between 1986 and 1993, 12,000 children died. My parents and many others like them who helped in the cleanup died a few years later from radiation sickness. We must rid this world of all nuclear weapons before they cause more misery, before they destroy the delicate environment that keeps us alive. I will not allow this pain and anxiety to pass on to yet another generation. If we do not drastically reduce the number of stockpiled nuclear weapons, it's going to become easier and easier for terrorists to get their hands on them. That means more terrorist attacks like this one. There was some talk about both sides reducing their nuclear stockpiles to a core deterrent force of less than 500 missiles each, and declaring that there would be no nuclear counterstrike in the event of the use of conventional or chemical weapons. But talks fell through. It seems that America is unwilling to relinquish its position as the most powerful country in the world. There is no doubt about it. After the Cold War ended, the chance of a full-scale worldwide nuclear conflagration was diminished. But on the other hand, the chances of local tactical use of nuclear weapons greatly increased. Civil wars, revolutions, regional disputes, it seems like there is a new war popping up somewhere every day, and many of them are the result of centuries-old hatred between different ethnic or religious groups. These people do not think rationally or logically. In such conflicts, there is no concern for the high civilian casualty rate, and international criticism means little. A nuclear deterrent is meaningless because emotions run so hot. Furthermore, Unlike strategic nuclear missiles, the decision to use tactical nuclear missiles is in some cases left up to battlefield commanders. It is pretty scary. As long as nuclear weapons continue to proliferate, the chances that someone is going to use them will also continue to grow. Ironically, the policy of nuclear deterrence has prevented the elimination of nuclear weapons. 
the entire basis for determining them to be illegal has been undermined by this military policy. In other words, nuclear weapons cannot be declared illegal because we have an entrenched policy which makes them legal, ipso facto. America and Russia are not the only countries with nuclear weapons. During the Cold War, the UK, France, and China publicly declared the existence of their own nuclear arsenals. Since we entered the 21st century, we have confirmed the existence of nuclear weapons programs in countries throughout Africa, the Middle East, South America, and Asia. Nukes are steadily proliferating. The 21st century is paying for the 20th century's failure to plug the holes in the NPT and for the IAEA's failure to tighten nuclear control measures. So, you beat Wolf, huh? She was a fool to use the same tactics that failed her in your first meeting. But remember, don't let down your guard until you've got a confirmed kill. I do for you, Snake. In China, they say, the snake, knowing itself, strikes swiftly. It means that if you have confidence that what you're doing is part of your true nature, there should be no hesitation. I don't know whether your orders are in your true nature or not, but Snake, believe in yourself. <laughs> 